This video is an introduction to the WIC editor. Um, I'll put the link to the WIC editor in the description. It is a very easy to use frame by frame animation program that is web based. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm enlarging the project to the larger size. The default size is the smaller size. So this will give you higher resolution. Um, what you're going to do is I'm changing the fill color and I'm pulling out a dot. So that's going to be the first frame of our, my animation. And now I'm pulling it off the edge of the page. And I'm going to hit C for copy and then... I'm going to click on the second frame of the animation and hit P for paste. So at the bottom there, you see there's something called onion skinning, and I keep switching to the next frame before I paste it again. So I'm copying it and pasting it, copying it and pasting it. Um, so each frame will have one dot in it. And you look in the timeline, you're going to see the frames. You have to click on the next frame or it just pastes two dots in one frame, which I keep accidentally doing, as you can see. Now, what I'm doing is I'm stretching the dot out each time by just pulling on the sides. If you just want to make the dot bigger, you have to hold the shift key down while you're pulling on the sides. Um, but I don't want to do that. I actually want to distort it. I want to make it longer and thinner because I'm using the squash and stretch concept, which is one of the principal one in the 12 principles of animation. Now you can see, I see a ghost image of where it was in the previous frame. That's called onion skinning. And you can see on the bottom that I clicked onion skinning right above the timeline. There's a bunch of options. So I'm stretching it out and I'm in each frame, pasting it and moving it a little farther. And when it gets to the bottom, it's going to squash against the floor. So it's going to change shape again. Uh, hopefully you watch the squ um, squash and stretch video that I showed you previously. And I'll put the link to that in the description. And once it's squashed to the floor, it bounces back up again to regain its shape and then it bounces up. So again, all I'm doing is copying each frame, going, clicking over to the next frame, pasting it into the next frame, and then changing the slate shape or rotating it just slightly. The trick is not to change it too much from frame to frame. Now this animation has a frame rate of 12 frames per second. And by the time I'm done, it's going to have 36 frames, which gives it a make means that I'm making a three second animation just by frame by frame animating. So again, I'm stretching it out as it goes on its upward journey, but I'm trying not to make it change its size. So that's important. The mass of the ball has to be pretty much the same. So if you squeeze it in, you might have to stretch it longer. Um, I wanted to regain its round ball shape as it gets near the top of its arc. And I found it was pretty much impossible to do. Every time I stretched it, it got distorted in a new way. So at a certain point, I actually, instead of pasting in a new ball, I just created a new ball. Um, I used the elliptical uh, shape maker and I just uh, pulled out a new shape. So what you're going to do is when you're done making the entire uh, bouncing ball um, root, it's going to go off the p end of the page. You're going to see that it came in from off the edge of the page and it exits from off the edge of the page. And there's a very important reason why we do this. We want to make sure that we can loop the video. Three seconds is a very short period of time for a video. So... If it comes off the edge of the page, goes onto the page, and then bounces off the edge, and we keep looping it over and over and over again, it'll just look like another ball came onto the page right afterwards and then bounced off the edge. You won't have that sort of jolt that you sometimes see if you're looking at a GIF on the internet where it doesn't loop properly. 
and where the video ends and then begins again, there's sort of a jolt in the, in the picture. So starting off the edge and ending off the edge will avoid that. So when I'm done creating this video where the ball goes off the edge of the page, I'm just going to play it back once and see how it looks. And if any of the frames don't make sense or are messed up, um, I'll see it. Sometimes you'll see that I accidentally put two balls in the same frame. Um, occasionally you have a student that misses a frame. So there's a blank frame in there that gives a little flesh. Or I could have accidentally made the, one of the balls a little too big. Usually there's some part of the animation that doesn't look right and you have to go back and correct it frame by frame. And that did happen in this video. I'll show you where I messed up and I just sort of stopped it and I clicked frame by frame until I found the mess up and I fixed it. So now I'm gonna test the video. There we go. And you can see right as it's bouncing up, about halfway up, something's wrong. There's a, just a little bit of a, a part where there's something wrong. And I think what it was was the video was, um, the ball was a little bit the wrong size. And I think in one point, at one point I actually had two balls together I had pasted without clicking to the next frame, so there were two balls together in one frame. So I had to go back and fix that so it looked right. You see where the, there's two balls together in one frame and it looks wrong? That's what it, what's what it, yep, there it is. I fixed that, I deleted one of them. And now it looks a lot better. So now, if you go down to the timeline, I'm actually gonna click on another layer. And underneath that layer, I'm going to make the line. But instead of drawing a single line, I'm actually going to draw, uh, pull out a rectangle shape with a, a dark blue fill. And then I'm clicking on the little selection tool and I'm just dragging it to make it longer. And now it looks like a line. It's really just a stretched out rectangle. So I'm going to actually do another animation underneath the first one. So I'm on layer two and I'm just making that little stick come from off the page. So all I'm doing is copying, pasting it and moving it slightly or rotating it. And I go through all 36 frames with the stick um, and then I play it and then I'm going to adjust it again so that it looks um, so that it looks right with the with the dot. Now, one of the things that you might want to do is you might want to think about the dot and the line interacting with each other instead of just coexisting on two different layers. So you could do something interesting like have the dot bounce over the line, or you could have the line hit the dot like it's a baseball. Um, so th there's many different things that you can do to make the story a little bit more interesting. I didn't do any of that because this is just a demo, but I, I would like you to think about a way that you could make the dot and the line interacting with each other a little more interesting within the confines of a three second video. So when I'm done um, copying, pasting, and moving the line, I'm going to replay it back and I'm going to see how the dot and the line interact with each other and I might want to tweak it right where they they come in, coincide with each other because right now the ball is in front the line is in back um, and they don't ever they don't really meet each other they just kind of want one's near and the other's farther so if I want to have the dot hitting the line I may want to adjust that intersection. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to replay it, and I'm going to see if I can't make the story a little bit more interesting by tweaking that midpoint of the story. So here I am, I'm playing it. Let's see. Got two frames left. All right, now I'm going to play it just to see how it looks. And yeah, I want to make the it look more like the dots hitting the line. So I'm going to go into the middle and I'm going to tweak that and play around with it. Just a 
looking at those those frames specifically going frame by frame and seeing if I can slightly move the dot so that it looks like the it hits the stick and the stick actually changes the trajectory of the bouncing ball so let me play around with that just a tiny bit it's a case of adjusting a few frames and then I'll replay it and then I'll be ready to export it Um, just once you change a few frames, you got to change all the frames that come after to make it make more sense. So I'm rotating and moving the dot. And the whole time I'm thinking about it, how a ball acts when it moves through the air. And it actually goes off the edge of the page a little bit earlier in the animation than it did before. Anything outside of that white frame is not going to be seen. So there's now my finished animation. I could tweak it more, but I'm not going to because it's just a demo. And now I'm going to show you how to export it. If you just hit save, you're going to... Oh, I want to add another layer for a background. So I'm adding layer three. And if you want to fill the entire background, you actually have to create a rectangle and fill it. So I changed the fill layer to green, the fill color to green, and I pulled out an, a rectangle shape, and now there's my layer three, that's my bottom layer, and now I have a three layer animation of my bouncing uh, dot and line. Now if you just hit save, it's gonna just save the project to your Chromebook, and you can put the project into Google Classroom, but that's not your animation, that's not a product, that's just your, your work showing your process so what you need to do is export so you hit export do not make an animated gif you need a video so i'm going to change the name to the dot and the line and now i'm going to click on video which can is going to export it as a three second mp4 and that is what i need in google classroom if you want to make a gif gifs are very fun um it'll repeat you know over and over again but i will not give you a grade on a gif you need to export it as an mp4 video and put that into google classroom and here is the completed three second video by duplicating the clip on the iMovie app on my phone i'm making the video look as if it's looping over and over again